Go 1.23 has finally arrived, and with it we have a bunch of new features. Of these, the most notorious one is function iterators, which has perhaps been the most controversial feature added to the language since generics in Go 1.18. Earlier in the year, I did an entire video looking at function iterators, and implemented some common looping patterns in Go using the new feature. One of these patterns was parallel iteration, where I built a function iterator that allowed you to iterate over a slice of elements concurrently. Whilst this parallel iterator did work, it made me feel a little uncomfortable about the feature as it did a really good job of hiding the fact that the code was running concurrently. Fortunately, it seems like the team developing Go are either fans of my channel, or more likely, they're just very smart gophers. Because with 1.23, it's no longer possible to perform parallel iteration with function iterators. If I try to run my parallel iterator code as I did before, Go will now throw a panic, due to it detecting that the next iteration has begun before the previous one has completed. Whilst the error message doesn't explain this in the best way, we can see that this is the case by reading the comments in the source code, which shows us that this error message will be called when either the body of the loop has panicked or is currently running. Whilst it's not a perfect solution, it does help to reduce the amount of iterator abuse from taking place, which to me makes the feature feel a little more complete. If you've been following along with the development of this feature, there's been a lot of discussion online about the lack of readability when it comes to implementing a function iterator. The team at Go have made some strides to resolve this. This is through using both the seek and seek2 types of the iter package, which can and should, in my opinion, be used to define the return value of a function iterator. By doing so, it makes working with iterators just that little bit easier. In addition to the iter package, a number of other packages in the standard library now have function iterator support as well. These include the slices package, which provides a number of different functions to allow us to iterate over slices in various ways. One of these is the backward function, which returns an iterator that loops over a slice in reverse. Or my personal favorite, the chunk func, which returns an iterator that allows you to loop over sized chunks of a given slice. This is great for a number of different data operations, such as limiting the number of elements you wish to send to a batch operation. As well as functions that return iterators, we also have a couple that accept an iterator as a parameter as well. One of these is the collect function, which collects all of the values of an iter.seek into a new slice. In addition to the collect function, we also have the new appendSeq function as well, which appends the values of an iterator onto a slice, returning the extended one. Both of these functions allow us to perform composition on iterators to produce new collections, and feel somewhat familiar to the way that iterators work in Rust. In addition to the slices package, we also have a few functions that work with iterators coming to the maps package as well. These include similar iterators as we found with the slices package, such as the all function, values function, keys function, and collect function. Additionally, the maps package also provides the insert function, which accepts a parameter of iter.seq2 and inserts all of the values from it into an existing map. Here, I'm using it to create a map of strings to ints where the key is the value of the slice and the integer is the index, allowing me to easily look up where in a slice a value lives. Whilst being able to do these sorts of conversions is pretty cool, it does highlight something that I think is currently lacking when it comes to using iterators. Adapter functions. These are functions to help you perform common actions when it comes to iterators, such as the swap one I just defined. Another example would be an adapter to turn an iter.seq2 type into an iter.seq through taking either the first or second value of the seek2 iterator. Whilst it's not exactly difficult to implement these helper functions, having them in the standard library would make working with iterators just that little bit easier. Fortunately, there is a proposal for an extension package for iterator adapters, which has been dangerously named Zitter or Xitter. Here is where we can expect to see some of the possible utility functions being added to the standard library in a future version of Go. As I mentioned in my previous video, I expect function iterators to change some of the way that we perform looping operations when it comes to Go. And whilst I was hesitant at first, following the 1.23 release, I'm pretty excited to see where this feature is gonna, well, go. I wanna give a big thank you to my two newest channel members, No Monday and Dominic Carrington. Thank you for supporting the channel and allowing me to bring my content to hundreds of thousands of people around the world.